We're going to be chatting with Efrain, he's Texan artist, Efrain, new album squad, finding out all about him right now. Let's get into it. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm pretty good, man. How you doing? Yeah, man. Welcome, Efrain, to Hope Jams, man. I uh, appreciate you inviting me in. Yeah, yeah, but definitely, brother. I mean, it's a pleasure chatting with you. First time you've been on Hope Jams, so obviously you want to get all the juicy gossip for you, man, and find out, obviously, the intel of who you are and kind of where you come from, man. So, you know, if you want to tell us a bit like the intro of how you got into the music scene, a bit of testimony in as well, whatever you want to give us, man, you know, break it down for us, man. Okay, well, first of all, I'm from McAllen, Texas. It's like a small town in the south of Texas, basically bordered to Mexico, so... Yeah, um, I wasn't supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to do this type of music, but um, I was hanging out with some cousins of mine when I was like 15 years old. They were in this, they were gonna record in their closet and stuff, and I was I was like, okay, well I gotta go because he was with some friends I didn't know. But then he just told me, hey man, just why don't you just hang around and see what we do? So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll hang around. And then out of nowhere, like they're listening to beats and stuff, and I'm just hanging out with them there and I started mumbling some melodies. It was like a sad song melody and I was like, okay, these guys are like kind of gangster and stuff. So I don't think they're going to get into that. They're more into like the trap, more into like the, you know. And so I didn't really want to say it out loud, but they heard me mumbling. They're like, dude, you need to record that. And I'm like, nah, man, like I don't, I don't make music. I've never done that. And I don't even think this is like what you guys would be into. And eventually, my cousin and his friends convinced me to do it, and I recorded the song. Like we, they helped me write the melodies, and I mean, they helped me write the lyrics to the melodies, and I ended up recording a song to that. And I didn't think much of it. I wasn't thinking I was going to be an artist, but then they shared it in school, in high school, and it was like a kind of like a suicide awareness type of song, where like, if you want to kill yourself, you know, like don't, like keep on pressing, keep on going. Uh, keep in mind, these guys weren't Christian. And I, I was a Christian, but I wasn't intending to make Christian music. I was just writing what I felt. And it just blew off. At school, they invited us to go perform it. They started doing like a suicide awareness week. And it was just crazy. Like, it all started from that. And from then on, like, I hung around my cousin. He showed me a little bit of how to record. Then went on to study music when I graduated. And now I'm here doing that. Wow, man. So it's like gone on from there straight into a music career then. Yeah, and now I'm about to be 25 next week and almost 10 years and I'm here doing that. All from being peer pressured into doing something I didn't want to do, believe it or not. Wow, man, but that's a, that's a big thing to, you know, like to say like you've jumped into a music career based upon, you know, like that happening with, a, you know, peer pressure. So, I mean, obviously it, it kind of was a peer pressure, but it was kind of like maybe like you did, you know, deeply down, you you didn't want to say it. Maybe you didn't think you could do it, but actually you did want to do it maybe. Right, yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, there was a reason I mumbled melodies like that. Like, I don't know why, but I wanted to do it, but I just didn't feel comfortable enough to do it around them because they looked like they had a whole different persona behind who they were. So I didn't think they were going to like that. And then for them to like, they don't even, they didn't even know about, they don't even worship God or anything like that. And then for them to say, yeah, look, you know what, we're all going to do a Christian song. We're all going to go ahead and do this. And then to go do Suicide Awareness Week at their school and a few other schools. Like, I mean, that's what motivated me and wanted me to keep doing it. People were telling me, hey, man, like, you need to keep doing this type of music. We hear so much about gangs and trap music, you know what I mean? And we need more of this. So from then, it went on to that. So what happened with your friends then when you started doing it? Like, presumably when you were singing or doing your thing, your thing was more based upon your relationship with, with God kind of thing. So when you did that, like, what was your friend's response to it, like, moving on? They were more like, I respect it. I'll, I'll rock with it when I rock with it. But they went on separately. But once I learned how to record my own stuff and stuff through my cousin, I branched out of that. Didn't really associate with them much because they they were part of gangs and they were still around the violence so i couldn't really hang around with them too much but then from there i started doing my own thing in my house and started making music and continued it and eventually i got better i started finding my own flow recently so yeah i mean it's it's been a long progress it's been about 10 years wow man and obviously like 10 years so i mean but has any of those old friends have they like hit up with you recently do they still connect with you in any way have they seen like been influenced by your music at all 
Well, my cousin, he still hangs out with me sometimes, and I talk to him about God, and he hears, he hears the songs, he likes it. And the other guys, they, I mean, I really don't know much about them. I mean, I think some of them have been locked up. They don't really don't. I haven't kept up with them, to be honest. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe that could be something in the future, man. Because obviously, like your music could touch people. Because right. you're you're like a the thing about you guys is that you're an, you're a singer and you're a rapper, aren't you? You you do both, which is a, yeah, a brilliant I, thing. I like to do both. Yeah, I mean that's a brilliant thing. So I mean you can connect with people. You know, I mean obviously rap might be one thing, but singing's another thing. And you could you know it's great that you can do. You're kind of like multi talented that you can reach you know different people. Maybe. Yeah, I really like that. Like with the singing, when I don't have like deep lyrics and like I. Just, Sometimes you just don't know what to say. It's something you just feel, right? And that's what I feel I can do when I do my singing. Like, it might not be the most lyrical things I'm saying, but I really mean what I'm saying. So that's when I like to sing it out. And when I have, like, a lot to say, sometimes singing it is not enough room for it. So I have to rap it. So it's the best of both worlds. Definitely, man. You're obviously living in Texas now, man. So... Uh, what is the scene that you're in in Texas, like with your music? Like, do you f- do you feel like you fit into a subculture, or are you just doing your own kind of thing? Well, um, where I live right now, because Texas could be its own country. Like, depending where you're at, it's completely different culture and yeah. environment. Specifically, where I'm at right now, I feel is not the best spot to be in for the type of music I do. They're more into Spanish music, but I mean, I do know Spanish. I could incorporate it just like the way you heard the hold me down song i just played i throw in some little bit of spanish so i mean it just depends on which route i were to want to stick with but for now i want to stick more on the english side yeah man well obviously that's good man you gotta find a lane and, and that you're suited to i guess man but obviously 10 years in the game so where do you see yourself fitting now is this something that is is you know, is it kind of like a hobby to you, or are you trying to get into it like a full-time position? Yeah, I mean, I've been working on going full-time with it. I've rebranded many times because I felt some of my older stuff weren't suitable to help me get there. So lately, like, I've been in the rebranding stage right now. So now I'm starting to see better fruit from it. I'm starting to grow more as an artist. I'm collabing with big artists, like, I mean, in the CHH side. Like, the song you guys just played with George Armstrong, I got... A song with Joey Vantes, I got a song with CJ King, and I want to do some more collabs with other artists. And also in my work, I'm just trying to do some investments here and there, so that way I can have the funds to make a means off of li- living in full-time industry, full-time music. Yeah, man. That's good. you got to take your time, I guess. It takes time to build, doesn't it, to, to grow and stuff like that. So um, yeah. Tell us about Squad then, man. What's what's up with Squad? Because that came out, what, like a month ago? And what's, yeah. the, what's the reception on it? So Squad's been the actually one of the best uh, reactions I've gotten from a mixtape, from an album, I mean. Like, I wasn't expecting the result I got, but ever since Spotify came into play, it's just changed the game. And Spotify has added me to very large editorial playlists. So... There's one song specifically called Far Away from there that it's called Far Away and it's just gotten lots of streams and been added to like over five or six playlists that are pretty big. So it's really helping out in that case. And I mean, the the whole idea of Squad was to make this song with all my, all the people that I have really admired in music and are friends of mine. So, you know, like Jordan Armstrong, he was, he's one of my favorite artists. So I had to message him and reach out to him to see if he could do a song likewise with joey vances and cj king and of course my friend milo Vin. he's my best friend he actually lives in mccown texas in the same city i'm in so it's pretty cool yeah man I, yeah obviously I, know, I see some names on there as well like cj king and uh, joey vances as well he's coming up a, a lot like i've seen him on a lot of yeah he's been featured on a, a lot of people's albums and stuff like that so that's really cool but tell us about yeah, he's everywhere now yeah he's getting he's getting <laughs> mad i i didn't actually know about him to be honest i didn't know anything about him and i started you know seeing his name everywhere so i'm thinking to myself like i gotta get in touch with this guy you know and find out more about him but um right tell us about squad then man like how did you put it together and what's the kind of meaning behind it so the meaning behind it is just literally like i have all my team with me like everyone whether you know like just anyone who is in the same mission as me and that I just admired or I'm friends with, like that's that was the whole idea with it. It wasn't something deep or anything like that. It was just like I'm gonna make songs with 
people that I really like or people that I'm friends with, and we're just gonna do this song, these songs, and pile it up into a CD. That's basically on that one. Cool, man. So, how many tracks do you got now all together? On that one, it's got eight songs. Nice one. And then, yeah, man. So you obviously, I believe it's eight songs. <laughs> you should know, man. <laughs> it's been, I've been doing so many songs. I'm, I'm really off it. It's got "Hold Me Down." Um, yeah, it's, I think it's, I think it's six actually. Man, I'm sorry. This is so many songs I've done lately. Well, if I'm it's, off, but if it, if it's six tracks, it's more like an EP then. Yeah, but I think it is eight songs. Well, either way, <laughs> it's uh, it's all right there. I mean, it's 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 good either way, man. I mean, obviously, it's good yeah, to it is see eight that. songs actually. It's good to see you grow, man. You got those those cool features on there, and that's obviously going to boost your profile. So it's, it's always good to see when you know. what I mean, say for example, like you saying, like you're in a, you think you're in a place in Texas which isn't so much good for your growth yeah, of your music, but I travel a lot. I like to move around a lot. I I go all over Texas. I'm very mobile, so. I might not be here for that long. I might live here still, but I'm, I'm basically everywhere. Anywhere I need to be, I'll be there. It ain't that big of a deal. But yeah, it's eight songs, but lately I'm working on a bunch of singles, just releasing. Once I find a new theme, then I'll start to make another CD. All right, man. So um, before we get into your next track, man, um, where can people go grab you, man, with your uh, social media and stuff? All right, well, you can follow me on Instagram at Ephraim underscore OV. E-F-R-A-I-N If you don't know how to spell the name And on Twitter Same thing Efrain O-V And on On Facebook You can find me as Efrain O-V Music But it will just say Efrain on the title of my name If you want to find me on YouTube Just put Efrain O-V as well uh, Almost everywhere is Efrain O-V And on Spotify Spotify is where I'm Starting to get more reactions So if you want to keep up With the newest singles Follow me on Spotify <laughs> 